Hi, good morning everyone. I'm Nanette Reyes and I'm speaking from Manila, Philippines. Today I'm going to present the basics of animal nutrition and uh, feed formulation. This topic is a bit uh, technical, but uh, I'll try to explain it in the most simple way possible in the next 15 minutes. Okay, so what is animal nutrition? Animal nutrition actually involves various processes wherein uh, we provide the nutrient or balanced nutrients to support the different uh, requirements of animals to perform and of course uh, the interactions of these nutrients into the body's uh, functions which include digestion, absorption, assimilation and uh, excretion. The main objective there is really to find the balance of uh, you know, uh, getting the optimum performance uh, coming from those nutrients. When we talk about animal nutrition, we don't think only of feed formulation. Animal nutrition should be part of all other processes that involves in the production of quality feeds. So starting from uh, quality control parameters, from of course uh, with the feed formulation, and of course the processing and up to the animal production per se. So, what are the components that uh, we need to uh, include or, or, or put in the feeds? One is, of course, energy. Second, uh, the protein and amino acids, uh, lipids coming from fats and oil. Of course, the small uh, nutrients also such as vitamins, minerals, and water. Now, all these uh, important components of feeds should be provided to, to the animals according to uh, their requirement, which are influenced by their stages of uh, production and, of course, their ages. So the first uh, stage that we need to uh, support and provide these nutrients is, of course, the maintenance requirement. So uh, the, the amount of nutrient that we provide to maintain animals depend on the size of the animal. So obviously, the bigger the animals, the bigger the maintenance requirement. After fulfilling or providing the requirement for maintenance, everything beyond that will be used for growth. So the growth requirement of all animals is also depending on the age. So the younger animals usually require more for growth, you know, for muscles, uh, for, for uh, bone uh, growth. And then after that, everything that's in excess of the, the nutrients present in the feeds that we pr provide on a daily basis go to the reproduction and production aspect. So pr reproduction for pregnant sows, for example, to support the growing uh, fetuses inside the body for production uh, for, for the other breeders, such as lactating sows, for the production of milk, for dairy animals even, and uh, say for layers to produce eggs. So talking about uh, poultry and pig diets particularly, no? uh, when we uh, formulate diets for these two uh, you know, uh, species, more than 60% or about 60% at least of their uh, combination comes from the energy source ingredients. And th these are usually cereal grains such as corn, sorghum, wheat, barley, and uh, some other plant byproducts and also coming from fats and oil. While the protein and amino acids are actually uh, provided for by mostly oil seeds, particularly soybean meal, and of course some uh, you know, uh, animal byproducts as well. Combining these two main uh, contributors, you are already hitting about 80 to 85 percent of your feed cost. And that's the reason why uh, you know, any movement or any change in the quality or, or price of these uh, major uh, raw materials is already giving huge impact on the uh, cost and even quality of your feed. Of course, you need to provide also the other uh, micronutrients such as vitamins, minerals, and other small uh, nutrients that are necessary for optimum uh, production. Given that the energy and protein are the most essential uh, component of the diets or, or most important, uh, let's talk about that you know, It's very short time. Uh, what are the functions of energy? Why do we have to look into this energy? By the way, energy is not considered as nutrient but because energy is actually being produced from those nutrients such as digestible protein, carbohydrates, starch, and so on. But basically, uh, we use energy 
to measure you know the the these nutrients that are uh, available in the uh, feed so why do we need the energy energy is important because it is uh, maintaining and sustaining the basic functions in the animal's body it's also very important in the protein and lipid deposition so that these nutrients will be absorbed by the body and used in uh, in its different uh, 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 you know performance and it's also uh, keeping the body temperature in its normal level in most instances if you will look at the feed formula you will see that uh, the energy content is actually uh, you know, I used uh, based on the metabolizable energy level. So if you look at this, the right side of this slide, you would see, uh, and I put an example here for corn being the most common uh, uh, source of energy in, in a formula. For example, the gross energy content of corn is 4,200 kilocalories per kilogram. But you don't put this 42,000 kilocalories of energy in your corn when you formulate. You are putting uh, say 3300 kilocalories because your pig will only be able to utilize the closest amount into uh, this based on the metabolizable energy so you don't use the uh, the energy uh, the gross energy there but instead the metabolizable energy actually the best um, the best uh, measurement there or unit of measurement should be the net energy and there are already some nutritionists and some companies who are able to use that because they have the information. You know, you need to know the, the these values, uh, and not only for corn, but for all your raw materials when you want to use net energy values. But nevertheless, metabolizable energy is actually one of the most common. When it comes to proteins and amino acids, and, and also very important, is that uh, we need to know, you know, what quality of proteins we have because our animals actually do not need proteins. What they need are the essential amino acids in balance ratio. Proteins are composed of individual amino acids, but not all the protein in raw materials, when you calculate or when you test them, contains digestible protein and therefore not all are containing digestible amino acids. So why is it like that? It's because when we when we test, for example, soybean meal, when you test it for crude, uh, when you test it for crude protein, you are testing the total nitrogen, and not all nitrogen are digestible or not all nitrogen are true protein. So that that, that and therefore they are not all going to be used by the animals. So for example, if you have the soybean meal, 47% crude protein, and you know that your total lies in there, which is the most uh, essential uh, amino acid for pol uh, for pigs and and of course methionine is in 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 and second to poultry you don't use 47 percent crude protein there because your your animals doesn't need your animal do not need 47 uh, crude protein and you don't, your animals uh, wouldn't be able to utilize the whole three percent of lysine there because there are always some part of it that are not digestible so it's important that you know how digestible or how available these very important nutrients are. For example, 47% crude protein and if its digestibility coefficient is only 86% and then the lysine is only 88% digestible, then the number that you should put in your database should be 40% uh, uh, digestible protein and 2.64 digestible uh, uh, lysine. The ideal protein concept will actually tell you how to uh, maximize the performance of your animals by providing these uh, correct values. So there are 10 essential amino acids needed by pigs and poultry to be provided for. The problem there is if you're most limiting amino acid, and I've already mentioned that lysine is the most limiting here, so even if you provide the rest of the 10 other or say the five other or four other essential amino acids, 100%, but if your lysine is lower than what it should be, then your animals will perform only according to that level of the most limiting amino acids, which in this case is lysine. So what happens here is that all those extras beyond that most limiting uh, amino acid level will only be wasted. And the worst there is uh, for the animals to excrete these extras, it will utilize some of the energy. 
So those energy that are instead of being used to grow and to to produce milk, for example, will be used to excrete the extra uh, amino acids that are not being used due to the uh, lower level of the most limiting amino acid. So it is very important that you you know your uh, raw materials. So you know those are very basic information that you need to probably consider if you are formulating a diet <clears throat> and not just you know uh, looking at the total or gross uh, values of your basic or major raw materials. Now feed formulation. Feed formulation is very dynamic. It's highly dynamic actually. You can do a lot of things in feed formulation. You can play with it. You can use whatever you want to use as long as you know what they are. But at the same time, it's very critical. Very critical because feeds actually uh, is the biggest you know, a source of production cost in poultry and pigs. Uh, it's about 70 to 80 percent of your, your production cost comes from feeds. So, Anything that you, you put there should be, should be you know, uh, correct and should be precise. The, the goal there is for any nutritionist or any, any formulator or a feed producer to produce the cheapest, highest quality but most palatable feed. So it on, uh, not only goes on the cost, not only on the highest quality in paper, but it has to be palatable. Because you want your animals to eat the feeds for them to grow. Even if you have good quality, you have uh, real, uh, even not just cheap, but even expensive feed, doesn't guarantee you it's very palatable. It's pal that your pigs will eat it, that your, your, your chicken will eat it. So it's very important that you look into the palatability as well. Now in feed formulation per se, you need to be precise. You need to know what's in your raw materials, or what your animals need. And you have to work with constraints, meaning you should know which raw material should not be put in certain level, for example. And you should also look into other uh, constraints like supply, you know, like demand, and all this kind of uh, information. You have to look into the animal's genetic potential, especially if you are producing uh, feeds for your own operation. Variation in raw material quality is very important because variation costs you money. If you are using book values and your, the, the quality of your raw material change every day, every shipment, every, every delivery, then you'll have some problem and losses there. Uh, market demands, you have to look at it as well, and of course, the government laws. So what are the basic steps of feed formulation? As I mentioned earlier, you have to start with quality control parameters. I mean, that's the, uh, maybe you have your own uh, you know, uh, quality control team, but still uh, uh, in animal nutrition, you have to include quality control as part of your function. But basically, in terms of uh, steps, you have to first do your ingredient listing. So you know, whatever raw material you want to use or whatever raw material you have in the warehouse. So it depends on how your operation runs. Basically, what you want are ingredients that are available whole year round. You don't want to use raw materials that you need to change, you know, on a weekly basis. So, and then after that, of course, you, you need to know how much they are, as you will be asked, you know, the, probably the cheapest possible uh, formula at the end. And after having all these raw materials and prices, you will now need to individually put their nutrient composition. So basically, and I've already mentioned earlier, you, it would be really good to put their both the total and the digestible values of those uh, nutrients in the raw materials that you want to use. And then you can also put there some of the constraints or the ingredient limits, the minimum and the maximum uh, you know, amount that you can use for each. And then after completing that list, you now go to your formula specifications. If you are required to produce, for example, 10, 15 uh, formula, you know, uh, a day for your, your pig operation or your poultry operation or you have both, then you need to put the different uh, nutrient content of those uh, formula. So according to the animal requirement, based on the feed intake, based on the, 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 the daily requirement, the daily intake of your animal, then you have to uh, consider those in making and putting the minimum nutrient requirement of each formula. 
And then you also put there the minimum and maximum limits for each of those uh, nutrients if needed. So later on, I'll show you an example of feed formula so you get an idea. Now, after completing those two, you have to now, you can now formulate. And the, the thing now is it's quite easy to formulate because there are so many software that are available that you can use. So, but basically, there are two ways to do it. One is what we always, I'm sure you always hear this, is a list cost feed formulation. When you say list cost, uh, you formulate, uh, you know, in a, with a possible uh, lowest cost, uh, lowest cost possible that you can, uh, you can produce. So meaning, uh, after, you know, satisfying or hitting or, or, or uh, achieving the, the minimum uh, nutrient uh, content of the formula that you want to, to produce and use them, you know, the correct ingredients based on your list, then bingo, you have your formula. Another way to do it is not really looking at the least uh, possible cost, but you look more on playing with your formula and getting the a little higher quality, for example, than you should than than the least cost, but not so expensive. So these are the things that you know. Uh, the, the reason why I say that feed formulation is a very dynamic process because you can play with it depending on you know uh, so many factors that we have already mentioned. Then after producing the formula, <coughs> uh, this formula will be sent to your production team. So uh, the production team will use this to, of course, process the feed. But in, in, in this case, you also have to look into some aspects or consider some points. For example, uh, you have to ask your production people if you know, a certain raw material can be used or can be processed in the feed mill, depending on their uh, setup, for example. You want to use more liquid uh, raw material, but uh, is your, your uh, feed mill setup able to do that? Do they have, you know, for example, a liquid uh, applicator or maybe not? Or do you, you, you want them to pelletize the, the, the feed, but they, the, they don't have the pelletizing machine? So obviously you cannot do that and things like those. So you have to look into that as well. And then at the same time, after the production here, you have to look into other aspects, for example, uh, how long will they need to store it? Uh, how long will they need to, to, uh, to transport it to, for example, to the farm or to, to your uh, customer? Because maybe you need to put antioxidant, maybe you need to put some mold inhibitor and so on. So these are the information that you know, needs some um, attention to and not just to do list cost formulation. So this is an, an example of feed formula. Uh, as you remember, we have here the list of the raw materials that uh, we want to use. Then you have here the price of each. Then you, this is the constraint that I was telling you. You have your minimum and maximum. And then based on this combination, you have here now the raw material, uh, I mean the feed uh, uh, quality or the nutrient content of the formula that we produced, and this one is for broiler starter. At the end uh, of this uh, um, formula, actually, you will have the cost of the uh, ingredient combination here. I just didn't put it here because it's, uh, it's uh, you know, in peso, and, you know, I mean, you probably uh, wouldn't want to see it anyway. So th th this is where you will actually see how much, you know, uh, uh, nutrients you can get from, for example, you're using 48% corn, so how much is the contribution? Then there are still other information that you can see from this particular uh, report or feed formula report. So in summary, uh, in feed formulation, although I said it's very dynamic, uh, you, you have to be very, very, very careful because whatever you put in there is what you will get. So unless, of course, you apply proper animal nutrition practices. So you need to know other aspects, not just the cost, not just the actual uh, nutrients uh, that you can get from each of your raw material. So in, in, in animal nutrition, quality and precision is equals to performance. So thank you for your time. <laughs>